Hello and welcome back to the 12th man on this wonderful Friday afternoon that we're all uh, enjoying at the moment during lockdown. I don't know if you've seen, but obviously the lockdown was extended until the 5th of March, where we are, so looking like we're going to be sitting on a lot more. Uh, it looks like we're going to be probably extended like again then, like even after the 5th. You know, oh. Not going to and things like that there too, like. I know, it's good at the moment. Um, normally we'd all be getting ready to go out for the weekend and stuff, but obviously with well, last year, things have changed drastically. Um, but the football is still away, so we're going to be chatting a lot about it. Um, big, big topic coming up, Liverpool's unbeaten record has been ended by Burnley, 68 games a night. I mean, they stretch them back four years, an incredible record, but we're going to be getting a late and where it went wrong for Liverpool last night and how it's been going over the last few games so. We're going to be looking at Chelsea and Frank Lampard under really, um, really amounts of pressure now. Um, Sky Sports said that he's only got a few games to try and turn it around um, or the plug will be pulled. We're also going to be looking at uh, Newcastle, your team. Um, <laughs> and getting under them and seeing how uh, how things could possibly change with the Steve Bruce there or is it just down to the club itself? Um, is it hopeless? Um, we're also going to be looking at Kevin De Bruyne as well. He's been, going to be with Phoenix 46 weeks. How that's going to affect Man City's title chances if they're still the favourites and he's going to be missing big games like Liverpool, Spurs and Arsenal. So, um, oh, and only one place they start, and that was last night's game. Um, sat mm-hmm. down, watched, I was getting ready to watch the game. And I was like, you know what? Me and Kian were chatting about it on Monday. Obviously, Kian's a good friend of yours. Yeah. If you don't get an early goal, it's going to be a, a very awkward night because Burnley can be very re- resilient. Uh, and he didn't get that early goal. You think about that chance for Ricky right before half time, clean through. Uh, you think it's actually he looked confident I mean, for a player that's not playing he just goes free and he, he probably hits it too well just cracks off the inside of the bar and my dad actually made a good point about this last night he was like saying you know their luck's out as well teams like Liverpool over the last couple of years yes they've been playing really well but they've got that like I think last year that good enough the other side of the bar them. and Liverpool yeah. won the game. Here it's not quite working that way um, Origi misses he gets hammered by Graham Sunnis when he's so close to putting him in the top corner it wasn't like he just fluffed it um, and then as the game goes on, we know what happens. But do you sort of sense that with Liverpool that we're going to get into how, how they're doing um, in general? But do you sort of think as well they're, they just can't get any sort of look at the moment as well? You know, when you're down there, it just doesn't go for you. I like, I think, like between like probably like the last, you could even say like the last few games, like the like, last season, they were getting like even goals like the 90th month. Like they could be down and out, like one each, even one ball. You always knew they were going to get their way through. Like, Yep. Like even last season, like you thought they could even went through it undefeated, like and everything. Yeah, I think Tom Heaton made a great point. He was in the studio with Graham Sinus. He was saying I was at Liverpool or Aston Villa um last season. So the year they won the league and they were yeah. one 0 down, got on to the last couple of minutes and Liverpool scored two. Um Andy Robertson scored a header in the ninetieth minute and I think Manny made a score a, a header in the ninety fourth minute. Uh, so that was the sort of and I think that's where they got the name of mentality monsters and this team doesn't know when they're beat. But last night and over the last few games, I've been watching them. The goals never really looked like coming. I think it was Carragher spoke about it. They really look like they're running out of ideas. Um, do you sort of is that, has that any confidence for you, or is it just a lack of quality at times? You know, is it or is it a bit of both? I think like it's more down like too. Like you're looking at teams too. Like more defensively set up, especially against teams like Liverpool, Man City. Like they know like the that front three could be ruthless at any given moment, like yeah. on their day, like especially. But like it showed against even West Brom, like they got there to go. And well, Bike Sam just kept his game plan the whole way through and frustrated them like and then even by half time they just looked bored because they couldn't do anything like with the ball. Mm. And then obviously and then they could like run all the games they like, gone with out there, like and then Salah can't even get anything at this rate, like you would uh, think the, he would be as ruthless as anything. Uh, the front three at the moment's really, really struggling for goals. Um and as, as I said, it's chopped and changed it last night for the, you know, obviously it made a couple of changes for the United game, but he obviously left Salah and Firmino out last night. I think probably won in the cup game on Sunday. Um, but it might have been as well just to try and freshen up a bit and maybe get it, you know, maybe get a different rhythm. Um, or he's a different kind of player, but the game sort of followed a similar pattern to the games against yourselves, um, Newcastle, the West Brom game, the Southampton game, where they never got an early goal and they just, they never really looked like scoring. Um, there's a couple of half chances on there, um, but as you said, they, they've lost that ruthless streak. As you say Salah and Manny, they make half chances, good chances, and they finish them. At the moment, it's just not happening for them. Um, and as I said a few times as well, last night, I think um, the times that Burnley needed a bit of luck, they got it. 
Um, you think about the chances at the crossbar, and then their opponent right at the end, where Fino sort of sticks his, his leg out and it beats the keeper. But I think it might have been Ben May that blocked it on the line. So there is wee bits of things going against them as well. But one question I wanted to ask, it was you sort of look, and I don't like to compare because Liverpool have won trophies over the last few years and the Spurs haven't. But you see me in Pochettino and Spurs, right? Where I think Graham Sinus made a great point last night. You don't become a bad team overnight. And that Spurs team all of a sudden just couldn't find any rhythm at all towards the end with Poch. Same, same kind of players that, you know, got the Champions League final, finished second, third, were beating good teams week in, week out um, over the last few years, but it just sort of faded away towards the end. I'm not saying that that's going to follow the same pattern here, but there is sort of signs there that the squad itself is getting to a stage where it probably needs to be changed a bit. Because I think Carter said last night, if you look at the, the team that started last night and you look at over the last few games, you look at the team that started the Champions League final against Madrid in 2018. Um, it's quite similar for the goalkeeper and um, Fabinho. It's the same team. So you're going with the same team for the last three, four years now. So do you think it is time to freshen it up? I think you would need to always like buy um every like single season because players can't get complacent too, which can be a big thing. Like like I think like I thought that you know the start of the season like I was saying to Kelm and a few of them too that like. You would definitely need like a backup right back, yep. just in case if he does go off form, then you can always then chop on someone else, mm. and then that trend like maybe even sell out for a few games. Yeah. Then like you're looking even like to like the impact of on like could even have on that back four. Although they're not shipping any goals, but like the confidence that would just go through the whole team, mm. it doesn't look as much like it's there. I think last night, Charger made a great point. He said. There has been a lot of talk about Van Dyke recently, but you can't keep blaming Van Dyke now because you've got a full team near enough for Van Dyke and Gomez. And yes, we aren't conceding goals. And you can say, yes, there's a bit of comedy goals. We should still be beating Burnley, beating Newcastle without a Van Dyke. You, know, you, can't, you, can't, you can't keep using that excuse. And I think it's one thing that last night, that's probably the first time I haven't heard anyone mention his name. Because I think people do realise now it is deeper than Van Dyke. The front three aren't delivering. Um, yes, Van Dyke can come back and make a difference, give him a bit of confidence. But I think that front three is probably the main issue at the moment and possibly the midfield. I was just looking at last night, right? Henderson's going to be uh, he's 30. Um, Thiago's around 30. Salah's 29. Um, Firmino's 29. And Manny will be 29 by the end of the season. So they're all coming to that stage where not that they're past it because they're not. They're still good players. But you always say you get players in the 25, 26, 27, 28 and you get their best years. You just wonder now if Liverpool have got them best years out of them and can they reach that level that they've had over the last few years. I know it's only five or six games, so it's crazy to think that, but you look at that front three, right? And I think it was a great point maybe with Kjarger on Monday Night Football last week. He was saying about the relationships with players that Reno had players for a couple of years, changed it, Ferguson the same, Barcelona the same. This will be their fourth season together, that front three. So it hasn't really been done before where, where it's continued on for that length of time. Mm-hmm. And... You just wonder, right? You look at Salah's contract situation. If he's not going to sign, I think I think Gargar said about Firmino possibly moving on. He would do Firmino, but the re- the problem I have with Firmino, right, is he suits a certain type of team. He plays uh, in that number nine role. Number ten, no, he's, he's your main striker. Uh, he has to play in a team that's got two way players scoring loads of goals, or he's not going to suit that team because you look at his goal record at Liverpool. It's not that great over the last couple of seasons, and most teams require their their front striker to be their main source of goals. So he's only really going to sit a few teams. So I think it's going to be difficult for Liverpool to find a team for him and get the money they want from him. I think Salah's probably the most likely to leave. Not something uh, Liverpool fans will yeah. want, want to see, but his contract situation is going to have two years left. If he's not going to sign, Liverpool will probably want to try and get the money they can from him and then reinvest it on the team. So what's your sort of take on it? I think Jota, yeah. like as well, Jota's a big mass for them. Yeah. Because like Jota could easily fall on the even like either side or even like enough for me to roll. But he'd be more ruthless, like as like a number nine, yeah. I would think. Because like for me, no, I don't think like I know he lacks conviction at times, like the score. Yeah. Like he had, I think it was like ninety nine shots or something like last season, but only scored nine. Obviously, that comes on to like where it is and stuff like that. Even that, that he last night, oh, even that chance he had last night, where he straight across the goal, he should be having the target there at least. You know, what I, I mean? should be like, but could be all down the confidence too, like at the end of the day, like. And you know what? I don't blame him. He's not a Harry Kane type of striker. He's not. He's not. He's on that team for different reasons. Yes, he's expected uh, to step on my goals, but he's he's only really create chances and create space for the other two, which is fine because they've been scoring goals. I think it's somewhere that happened at Arsenal with Abamian. With Abamian going off off form, you've seen with Arsenal this season they've struggled to score goals. 
Liverpool have relied heavily on Salah and Manny. So when they're not scoring goals, now they're out of form. They've got nobody else to really step up. I think Jada was taking on that role, as you say, the injury. Um, came at a really, really bad time. And Jada has sort of fresh up of it. Um, it'd be interesting to see if, if you were thinking about, um, say, I give you, say you're a Klopp now, right? And you can see he's been very defensive when he's been asked about a rebuild and saying people are saying we need to have a rebuild, they need to check our heads and stuff. I understand that because he's got loyalty to these players. Um, Pochettino was very defensive about it as well. Um, and as fans as well, I'm sure there's loyalty to players that's won them trophies and won them the Premier League, won them the Champions League. So it is a really difficult sort of situation to try and get your head around. But say you're Klopp now and you do, so he's got a good offer for Salah. He says, I'm not really interested in signing a contract now. Um, I've won it all at Liverpool. I want to go to Spain. Saves a good offer, comes in and they get the money from. What the big issue that has as well, and you've seen this with United over the last few years, it's not easy to replace your best players. Um, you're trying to replace players that's been consistent for a few years so it might not work first time and that's hence why you see you see in Ferguson at times they went three years we had a league title it took them maybe three years mm-hmm. to get back on it so I they say that they'll change it and it'll dramatically improve but who would you who would you look at they replace Salah? You know I'll run like two now because I think Salah would look off for you would be the one to go I personally don't think Manny you could get Manny out of that team no. I think Manny's personally the most important look on three like yeah. I think he's Practically undroppable. You're looking at like, I'm trying to think, even like all things like, because there have been. Well, no I last night, right? Was, like, I think if you're looking at world class, happen. sort of, it's very, it's very hard to get world class players, right? You're looking at Mbappe, I think it'd be very difficult to get him. Um, and all our players are in Europe, like Sancho, I think they're very hard and you're going to pay a lot of money for them. Plus, there's always a risk coming to a league we've not been on. They're fantastic players, but there's no guarantee it's going to work. I think you're safer going in an option in England. And the one option that I looked at was possibly Grealish. Now, Release is, is one where, yes, he still has a bit to prove, but he's 25. He's at that age where you think he, he's probably going to get him for his best years. Fala, depending on how he fin- I think they'll, they'll probably not finish in the top four, top six. So, therefore, it'll probably be the time for Release to move on, and they'll probably get big money from him. Um, and he would come in and give him a possibly a different option if you went with, say, Firmino, Jara, a manager from three, and possibly playing Release on behind them. Gives you a different option. He's a, he's a creative option. He can beat a player and bring all our players into the game. Um, you know, with, with that, and I think as well with Liverpool, I think one thing that they've happened over the last few, especially this season, but especially over the last few games, is they've become a bit predictable and they've only got that plan A and there's no real plan B. I think last night, Trent, who I'm a massive fan of, um, every one of his crosses wasn't completed. So not one cross was completed, and that's very unlike him. And I think you made a fantastic point earlier when you said, if he goes off the boil, he's a young player. You look at players like Dele Alley, Lingard, he burst onto the scene. They do have to have some form. Uh, there's no way that he's going to be able to sustain that level he's had. So Trent probably could benefit from coming out of the team. Um, but as you say, there's no real, there's no real option they, they bring they bring in. And he is one of their creative options because they've got that midfield that sort of run teams on the ground and they rely on the front three and the fullbacks to create chances. So um, it's not an easy situation to try and solve, is it? Um, oh, Oh, I don't think it is like because even Grealish too signed a five year deal. Like he definitely signed that there to get ball as much as they could out of him. Yeah, and, like, and the off chance that they like that to go down, but they're playing unbelievable this season too, like themselves. Mm. Oh like Sancho might be like their only way, but because then they have that English tag too. Yeah. It's gonna be an hour lot on top of it. Like mm. a lot of people don't normally spend like amounts of money on players like too. And so often something like that. I think the one thing we don't hold on one is you sort of it's sort of like City last year, right? Where City, yes, they could they, there was times in the season when they had good performances and everyone sort of thought, oh, this is City and they're gonna go on a run. And it's sort of getting that way with Liverpool this year. Every time they when they beat Spurs and beat Palace, you think, right, this is it, they're gonna go on a run. And it's not really materialized. It's happened a few times this season. Um I remember they beat Leicester, they beat Wolves conventionally at home and then maybe slopped up in the next game. And consistency's crept under a game. And you just wonder, is it going to sort of probably continue that way throughout the season? I think everyone's sort of waiting for them to turn that corner and string six or seven results to GR. But at the moment, it doesn't look like they're capable of doing that. Um, and that's probably down to confidence, down to personnel, lack of options on the bench. They possibly change it as well. So it looks like it could be a summer season to the one man's that they had last year, where they have to try and maybe change it for next year. And that'll be with personnel. Um, I, I don't know what you think of City this year, but I think they've adapted their style. The way they've been playing over the last couple of years is different to how they've been playing this year. So I'm sure that's the whole the club will be looking at in the summer. 
um, try and maybe bring a few players on and change the style of play because it, it looks like teams have worked out how to play against them. Uh, especially against Liverpool, like like they know that like as long as you can stop back and frustrate them, like especially what they're playing now, like it looks like they've just run out of confidence. They've run out of nearly everything. Yep. Even United like last week, United probably could have even beat them like two. Yeah. Uh, well, we've even had a couple of chances like, but they had like 26, 27 shots all game. Like, like they should have run away against us. Mm. Same with West Brom, but. I'm not too sure what way they'll go because oh, but they kept like, such a high standard too for like the last two seasons. I was bound to get a drop off at some point. Like okay. we've seen Plant study too, like last season. Like they've had the hundred and ninety nine points in two seasons. Oh hey, it was and never gonna be sustainable. Nah, it's never gonna be sustainable. I think Kiara made a great point last night. He said everyone expected a drop off. I think last season they had after nineteen games, they had eighteen months in a draw. So nearly impossible they they recreate that. But it's the fact they can only get nine months out of nineteen. Um, they've lost three, drew seven. So the, the, there's a lot of draws on there, and they're not they're not doing enough to win games. Um, and he and he actually said last night, I think they're in a fight for the top four. He didn't want, he didn't go as far as saying the title's gone, but they're in a situation now they're six points behind, and you almost think teams that are six points behind, they're almost in a no mistake. They can't make an hour an hour bad result because if they fall nine behind, it makes it very difficult to try and win it. So. But to be fair, most Liverpool fans I've been chatting, they've just been saying, just make sure we get top four now uh, and go again next year. So do you think that's the main target? Just make sure top four? Uh, if, they, if they don't get top four, then you'll be looking at serious problems then, like throughout. Like, because you wouldn't expect players like Alisson, Van Dijk, not to play Champions League football. Aye. And then I even think. the money, I'm, like the financial implications and everything even come off, but like, not coming on the top four. But it's, a point, it's a fantastic point, though. It's a fantastic point. We say, see, this year, I think the Champions League is more important than it's ever been. In terms of finances, we COVID about. There's no fans in the stadiums now for over a year, really. Far then a couple of weeks where there's two thousand fans on, which is not going to make a big difference to a uh, football club. We're looking at a full season, a full year, and about so a year and a quarter. We know fans. Um, so the Champions League finances is going to be even more important to clubs, and it's probably going to determine how much they can do in the summer. The one thing I was chatting with Callum about was, and he was quite critical um, of this. He was saying that FSG year are a but like. Most clubs, with their with their self sustaining club, will not put on any money that's not been made. So, I was saying, I think Klopp has done a fantastic job in terms of. He's only people think about they spent loads of money, but they've they've generated that money through player sales mm-hmm. and continue leaving, and they will then they buy Van Dijk and um, Allison. So it's going to be a similar situation for them to improve that squad. They're going to have to sell players like like a salary, trying to be improve them. Um, but I do think it it is time for them to inject a bit of cash into the club. Think about how Klopp's gone. It is, it is it's probably the stickiest spell they've had. Um, if you go back to Klopp's first season, he was always going to get time, but he's going to be under more pressure now in terms of not just by just by the media because of how Liverpool have been over the last couple of years. When you start dropping off, there is that media pressure, and you can sort of see it. He's getting agitated on the touchline. He's starting rows with managers. He's definitely feeling the pressure, and that's not much so much from the fans in the club. It's just the pressure situation of being that top club. Um, you know, Ferguson had it for years where he would have a good referees and stuff. So it's a situation where he probably needs a wee bit of help from the, the board now in the summer. Where he'll get it, it's another question. But you've seen these situations before, it can go one way, they are. Liverpool could rebuild and, and get back on the horse and start winning again, or it could completely fall off and they could end up in a situation where they're in the top four. And then there's a big decision to make about, about uh, the future of the club. So the next six six months is crucial for Liverpool, isn't it? Owen? Oh, babe, massive, right? Like, but I would always like I would never put it past them like not to get a top four. Like uh, every team could always have a bluff like, but I yeah. couldn't see them coming anywhere or outside even the top three. Like, yeah. But it's just, I think um, the next few games is gonna be crucial. Um you look at their fixtures, like got United in the cup on Sunday. And I think we're we're when you're on a on a bad run, every game becomes important. I think the United game at the weekend, it's a chance to it's a break from the league. So it's a chance to go away, you know. Get the mindset out of it, forget about the league for, for a wee while. Go on to the other cup game. If you can beat your rivals, it'll give you a bit of confidence. Um, I think if you lose this game, it just puts you under more pressure and you've possibly lost your best chance of a trophy. Um, if I had a pick my which trophy I think Liverpool's going to win the most, I would say the FA Cup's their best chance. Um, they're looking vulnerable in the league and, and the Champions League as well. You would you'd have to say at the moment they aren't gonna they aren't gonna win it. Um, that could change, but FA Cup, and I think that's why Klopp possibly rested a couple of players last night. He'll, he'll view the FA Cup as a chance of getting a trophy this season. But um, when you're not, when you're in that bad run, it is about trying to get out of it. And the fixtures haven't been kind. 
if it's Spurs next away, they've got a good record against Spurs, but it's it's going to be a tough game. Um, they've got Wolves coming up, always a tricky opponent away from home. Um, I think they've got Leicester on there and Everton on there as well coming up in February. Man City coming up, so there's a run of tough league games. So it's it's a big it's a big month ahead for Liverpool, isn't it? Uh, I think it's, it's going to be a big enough run, like, and then even then, uh, not Everton game, but probably one of the biggest games that they've had in years. Yeah. But Everton will be looking at like possibly top six, like, even they try and break into the top four. I don't think Everton will be in the top four, like, but they're. Well, they get as an opportunity. Team. They go with they go to Anfield and possibly they haven't won an Anfield for a long time, and the final be Liverpool. And you've seen this with Man City last year. Teams are st- slowly starting to lose that fear factor with them. And that can be a big thing as well. See, when teams were playing Liverpool over the last couple of years, they almost felt they were bit before they'd done the pitch. Mm. That is different now. Um, and teams are viewing them maybe like Man City were last year, so that there's a chance they go and get points. So it, it, is, it, is, it is a different situation for, for Liverpool they, they, they come, come up against. Because uh, even like games, like you said, like when they like ran away against Leicester and Wolves, like I thought Leicester might have given them a game, like even possibly in that zone, especially Leicester's away run was unbelievable like this season. Still yeah. has but they just like completely had the references that they have for like the last two years, and now it's just all seen they lost. But whether that's also down to like match fitness and things like that, there that's caught on on about like that is strange because they, they there has been games this season where they where they've been brilliant, and then there's other games where they've been poor, especially away from home. I think if you look at a lot of their draws, they were lucky draws away from home. They possibly could have lost a few of them games. So there, there's a big big difference, and they're they're just they're like, as I said, like Man City last year. I think Man City beat Watford 8 0 last year in a game, beat Villa 6 0 in a game, but then there was our games where they were poor. So it's just it sort of come fell under that trap of the R teams of being inconsistent. So, um, and I think when you've dropped from that level of being so consistent, it's very difficult to get it back. Um, I don't know what you think, but if you sort of summarize, um, how do you see it going for them over the next few games? Do you think they've all turned it around? I think the game on Sunday's massive, yeah. That's a confidence game. Like that's definitely why Klopp did Rick rest like Salah and Firmino yeah. uh, yesterday. I think um they must have thought like they had enough just to beat Burnley and then obviously it didn't go that way. But yeah. even then, like if they don't beat United, that's gonna be like a massive rush for them and it's gonna be even more confidence for them for United. Yeah. We seem like they could go like one 0 down away from home and just always seem to grind out of it all like they used to I agree. Do. I agree. I think I think Sunday's a big game in terms of the context, even the league as well. I know it's, I know it's not a league game, but if you say it's a chance they may be knocking it off, you know, they're unbeaten since November, um, and in, in the league. So you know if they can go there and maybe knock them off their stride a bit, um, it, it might help them and give them obviously confidence themselves. But if they go there, United beat them, it just gives United more momentum and then it just crushes them as well. And it almost goes on. They almost go on that Liverpool, the Spurs game. Then it's a must-win game. If they really lose them next two games, I'm not sure where where they can go from there. Um. Uh, They'd be, they'd be well behind to the top and they'd be behind the teams in the top four. I was sort of looking um, at the fixtures the other day. Spurs and Liverpool have been very unlucky in the schedule and other games because Spurs' is next three Premier League games, they play last every game. They're the 10th mm-hmm. game. Liverpool are obviously the 10th game against Spurs and then they're ninth against West Ham and ninth against Brighton. So all the teams before will have played. And if then teams get positive results, which you know, they're more pressure in them games, and the way the league is, you've got Everton, West Ham, um, and behind Liverpool and Spurs. So if they won their games, you're going to be sitting sixth, seventh in the league. And it puts you under huge pressure um, going on down games. Oh, no. Well, massively, like, you're like Spurs and Liverpool on Thursday is going to be like near his bike, like for the top four. It's how Mourinho mainly approaches it. Like, if he can see a weakness, like in that team, especially on Sunday. Even with the burn the like and all, it could go horrible for them. It just it all comes down mainly, like as you were saying, with the front three. If the front three aren't up for it, like I don't stay away from them, they they could get past Burrs. Mm. Especially well, with Son think, and Kane, like one AM just need one chance and they will bury it. Like. I think that they'll be trying to get their confidence back on Sunday if they, if they can go to United and one away from home. Um and sit and the front three are involved in the goals, it gives them a lot of confidence going to Spurs on Thursday. But I just going to move on. Um Owen, um, obviously, I don't know if you, did you watch the Chelsea game on Tuesday night away to Leicester? Uh, I've seen like parts of it, I like, but the, I don't know what was going on with Frank Lampard uh, like these days, like, sort, even aside. Sort of looked at it, and there was no identity, no style of play, no chemistry in their play. Um, sort of one thing I was chatting with the Kiam on, on um, Tuesday before the game, I was saying then that Lampard's obviously chopping and changing quite a lot. Uh, 
and you can see that in their game. Some of the players, I don't think they have an idea of who they're playing with. You look sometimes when they get get into the final third, they don't know what they're doing because um, they don't have relationships with 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 um with their teammates at times. You look at the you look at the. I'm just going to go through their front three at times. You've had you've, Werner plays one game, bench the next game. Shuri plays one game, bench the next game. Abraham comes on, he plays, gets benched. Hudson Odoi plays, benched. Um, Pulisic plays, benched. Um, Havertz plays, benched. ZX plays, benched. It's goes on and goes on. There's so many players in there. It's getting rotated around. And it's creating an uncertainty in their play. Um, and I thought Leicester were excellent. Um, and they come up against a really organised... It was Leicester were everything that Chelsea wanted to be. That's what I thought. I thought that Leicester had a plan. They had a style of play. They had an identity. Every player knew what they, what they were doing. And it, and Rodgers looked like a top-level manager. And then that was the difference. You know, everything about Leicester was... Leicester were better in every department, from their manager, their goalkeeper, their defenders, their muff leaders, their attackers. It was, it was a landslide victory. And I thought Chelsea were lucky to get, get out 2-0. Um, very similar to the Man City game where they were beat 3-1. It could have been any score. So, for you, what's going wrong at Chelsea? I think <coughs> Park personally doesn't know his best 11. Yeah. Like, you're looking even like you brought up Mendy. Mendy looked like the perfect replacement for Kepa. They start off with. He looks like great, certainly. Uh, I think there, it seems like there's no communication at the back. Like, even against Fulham, too. He just went like straight out when like Thiago Silva just went just easily past the ball back and that nearly ended up in fall and getting some even lost him in. Um, they're more or less like their only certainties in that team mainly I think is like Ben Chilwell, Thiago Silva, Zuma, and Mason Mount. Nah, the and players anyone players else just gets chopped in James. And Rich James going through a bit of a top as well. Um, he's had a bad, a bad, a bad run. Obviously, there was a lot of hype about him the start of the season. He had a few good games, but. Seems to be sort of suffering from the way Trent does. I think the English media at times can really put pressure on players. Um, you've seen that we miss him out at times as well. And when he's been in the England team, there's been a lot of talk about him. So um, that could be a reason for it. But just sort of look at them at the moment. And I was watching Sky Sports News. I think it was on Wednesday. Um, Gavi Solico was saying that from his understanding that Chelsea are going to give him a few games to try and turn it around. They've looked at the situation with Oli United and Arteta Arsenal where they were in bad runs and they were given time to turn it around but it's going to be a short period of time it's not going to be like until the end of the season it's going to be with possibly the next three or four games and if the results don't improve they're going to um, replace them I mean, apparently Chelsea won a German speaking coach and Nagelsmann will be the top target but Nagelsmann is, isn't prepared to take the job until the summer is the word so they're looking at a situation where is it really worth sacking him if we can't get our top man on but at the same time, if results get really, really bad, we'll just try and get an interim man until the end of the season and then get Nagelsmann. So I think that's benefited him. I think if Nagelsmann was ready to come, they would probably pull the plug now. He's got a few games to try and turn it around. Um, but I think when there's our managers being spoken about, like we, when, our, when Arteta was being being under pressure, you never really heard about our managers being talked up for the job. But there is being talk about Nagelsmann now. So I think Chelsea's mind's made up. I think regardless, they'll probably replace him at the end of the season. But Unless they were really turn it around and he, he was the finish in the top four, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen at the moment for him. Um, he looks out of his depth, to be fair. And I think he done a really, really good job last year. Old, and he's, all these players have come in. I, who knows? They might not have been all his signings. Um, they might have been somebody else picking the players, but he does look lost at the moment, doesn't he? Uh, it, it looks like he doesn't like know what to do. Like, And then, even then, like personally, Giroud, I think he should be always starting for them although like his age can't come under the fact of it but he brings out so much more they especially with, with, with Timo Werner like Timo Werner can't even barely even score like these days nice struggle he's, back he's off by form like but apparently then too even with Leipzig like, like he goes through like these spells of like not scoring yeah. but then it'd be ruthless but it's just more like will he get that ruthless streak back that's more what it goes down to I'm on an English game at the moment I'm not sure whether it's physically um, and obviously he's talking about a confidence Knox as well so mentally he's probably struggling and an ideal team doesn't help Lampard doesn't seem to have a confidence on to give him a run of five or six games I think Lampard's changing it so much because I think Lampard knows himself Chelsea don't give time to managers so I think that's why he's trying to find an immediate answer it's not as if he can play five or six games in a row the same team and try to get a run um, he knows he's under pressure and he's trying to get an immediate um, fix and that's why he's talking and changing quite a lot but um, the one thing I would say about, about Chelsea at the moment is the fractures have been kind over the next few games. If he is going to turn around, this is his best opportunity. He's got three home games. He's got Luton in the Cup on Sunday. That probably won't make a lot of difference. I think if they lose that game, he'll probably be sacked on the spot. But 
I would expect them to win that game. Having said that, it won't make a lot of difference. See, I'm not getting any. It's a no, it's a no one situation. You're expected to be Luton in the cup anyway. The next three in league are Wolves at home, Burnley at home, Spurs away. Um, he's going to need at least, I think, at least five, five, six points in them games. I think if he was the not, if he was the drop points in them home games, and they would really lose these Spurs, that would probably be it. Um, so do you sort of think that's the same, or do you think he might get a bit more time, or do you sort uh, of think he has on borrowed time? I think like a, you can you can tell like he's feeling the pressure like anyway. Even Fulham, they weren't anyway nearly as good like as what well, they should have been, especially playing the whole second half against ten men. And they looked right. Um, and then like Werner again, like straight on through like, and you would nearly put anything off from the Barry out there like and he had to wide. So far, and then, well, it was it was a maze way. That's how concerned it was. And then Luton, uh, as you said, like Luton's a must one. But it's a, it's a should be one like uh wolves wolves are in bad form like too like on their own like but it's just down they well they're missing Hamadez massively yeah but then they're looking to get Roy and Jose on on them yeah I've seen that yeah. I think I think if you look at it all right wolves will be tricky and Burnley will be tricky they're mm. going to really sit back we've seen what Burnley did um against Liverpool last night they're going to have a lot of confidence after that one but it's two games that Chelsea are expected to win in any season uh, so can't yeah, complain that way. You look at that as, as six points, they go into that Spurs game. We have a bit of confidence, but I'm saying if he doesn't get them six points and he goes into that Spurs game and loses, I think that'll be it because Chelsea and Spurs uh, are think... us. And I think as well, if they really lose that game against Spurs, they would be miles behind. So they would probably pull the plug. Uh, exactly. Like if they don't beat, if they don't even get six points, the pressure against Spurs is going to be massive. But yeah. even then, they could be so far off the top four and before Spurs, it could be nearly even pulled before it, or the yeah. decision could be already made before it. But Tom's yeah. took go too. I think he was linked too with Chelsea like as well. Tuchel was linked. I think he was on the short list. I think Tuchel, um, they're very wary of Tuchel. I think I think he's they look at his, his how he's done at Dortmund and PSG. He's not really got them over the line at times. Um, I think Nijelsman's obviously their top target, but again, he's a risk. Um, he's a young manager. He's only been at you no, know, he's been at Leipzig, but he's, he hasn't really won anything of, of prestige yet. Um, obviously they were minds they had in the league last year. Um, and they folded. And they got the semi final. Probably you wouldn't have put them on the semi final at the start of the season, so they probably looked at that as an achievement. Um, but they've lost players and they're probably not as strong as they were this year. Be interesting to see how they do against Liverpool in a couple of weeks' time. But I've, I've watched them against United, um, and they were well beat away from home. And I even think it part the whole second half of that game that they beat United, they were under serious pressure. So I'm just not sure on that. I think he's a talented coach, but I don't think he's, he's a guaranteed answer to, to Chelsea's that they you know. What, what they need. Uh, I agree. What's that? Go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say, yeah, it's down to two. Like, well, Abramovich then wants to give him more money in to sign players, like, because it's thinking, thinking more they're German. They're uh, stuff like that there. Yeah, I think that's the thinking behind it, that there's a lot of German players there and, and he might get the best out of them. But the, the, the one thing I would, that I, would, I would say about it is you look at them players and they've got a, not that they've, they've all been sort of touted. I think when Harvard signed, Everyone sort of thought, great signing. Werner, the same. Z- Ziyech, the same. Pulisic, the same. They, they were all well-known young players around Europe. So you'd imagine they've got a bit of an ego about them, at least. So you just wonder, would an, would an experienced manager be a better answer in terms of he might have a bit more control of the players, a bit more respect to the players? Um, but it's definitely one of the, one of the interests. I think everybody wants to see Nagelsmann in the Premier League anyway, uh, uh, just to see how he fares. So I um, got a breaking news this morning. Um, around Man City and it's a massive pull for them and that's Kevin De Bruyne is going to be out for at least four possibly six weeks um, he's going to miss games I know Man City have got a couple of favourable games coming up but after these next two or two games they've got um, Liverpool away Spurs at home Arsenal away um, and they'll have Champions League games in there in there too um, I know it's against Borussia Mission Glad, Gladbach but the Champions League is going to be a competition that Pep's going to think um, he's got a chance on again this year so how do you think that injury is going to um, affect the, the morale in the camp first and affect their chances of, of one in the one in the league? See, with the Bruyne, like he's like their go-to player. See, even if everyone but Man City like could be playing for, they would always just go to him. It's more or less if the Bruyne has a bad game, Man City will just not look great. Like, yeah. and it comes down then too. Like they don't have a striker at world now. He has coronavirus. Yep. So he's out now for another few weeks. Uh Gabriel Jesus is only coming back too. But you're looking at like the step between Aguero and Jesus is like a very big jump. They're showing that right big Aguero and Jesus. They keep you keep hearing them coming back and then they get injured again. I don't know what's going on there with them too. They haven't really featured at all. 
Um, every time you hear Aguero's, I think that's twice now, Aguero's trying to cover. I think it was an hour time, he was either had it or he was close connection again. So yeah. he's, obviously, he's obviously out again now. So I don't, I obviously don't want to be controversial, but it's almost like they don't want to come back on the team because they, they're not doing a lot. They seem to get themselves ready. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you say De Bruyne is their goal team, man? He links the play. Um, in my opinion, he's the best player in the league, especially when he's on form. And that's the big blow at the moment. Big blow at the moment for him. I think he's probably he's having his best spell of the season. You can see how influential he's been over the last few games. It's going to be a massive blow because they aren't scoring, as you say, they're not scoring loads and loads of goals. Um, and world class players, don't matter how many players you have at your club, they're, they're very hard to replace. So it's going to be a massive sort of massive importance now on Foden, Sterling, Bernardo Silva, they, they be even more influential, isn't there? Oh, they're all right. <laughs> I think Phil Foden, though, I think he'll thrive on it. Like, I think he's been brilliant this season. Great player. Same even with, like, the last end of, like, post-lockdown, like, last season, too. Like, I think he's been brilliant. Yeah. Um, played brilliant against Chelsea, played brilliant against Villa. Mm. Um, I think he could be, even if he moved more central, I think he could thrive on it. Mm. Personally. But it's the lack of striker, I think, could be, like, the big blow to him. Like. I look at the fixtures, right, in their next games are West Brom and Sheffield United, three bottom teams in the league. You'd expect City to win them anyway, but you just you know how they're going to play. They're going to be very very compact, and you just think that's a game where De Bruyne is going to be crucial. Mm. Um, as you say, they're not scoring a lot of goals, so I still expect them to win them games. But it does throw in a bit of a bit of doubt now. I think look at City this year; they have been inconsistent at times at the start of the season, and um, when De Bruyne was out and like and was games for De Bruyne at the start of the season, it was not at his best. So you just wonder now then games become a lot harder, and then going on to them bigger games against Liverpool, Spurs, Arsenal. De Bruyne is going to be a big must, whatever way you look at it, doesn't he? Oh, it's going to be massive. Like, uh, you're looking at like teams, of, like especially at like Sam West Brom, like they even got a point, well, I know slapping ball, it's like a West Brom got a point that they, they had, like, mm. so, and then they're going to be even more well drilled. Like, I don't expect Man City to beat them, like, but it's just, that's, I reckon they'll be probably one or two goals on it, at most. You just, like. you just look at it, you just look at it today, right? And um, if you're a United fan, you must be bouncing because you've just seen Liverpool's result last night. And they look like they're in a bad place. Um, you know, the, the, the most difficult place they've been in for a long time. Um, City losing De Bruyne for the next 46 weeks. Vardy's now out for a month as well. I've seen that this morning. Vardy's going to be out for a month. So United's challenge, you sort of title challengers are all sort of losing players. And um, Liverpool's having a sticky spell. And United's just coasting along there. And everything seems to be going in their, in their, in their favour at the moment. So how do you see it going over the next few weeks? And who, who's the favourites who you going on one of? I still think personally Man City is the favourite they want to like. Yeah. I like their squad depth was the best like in the league. I don't know if United could be sustainable enough. Yeah. Always like away from home, especially like going one 0 down like a lot of the times, and then you start kicking off from there. It's you gonna get listed for a team to kind of hold I out. Think like obviously that if they if they go one 0 down in a game against a really strong side, it'll be too much to turn around. Oh, exactly. I like. I'd say like even like a way they like uh, Spurs for example. Like if they go one all down, like there I couldn't see like much coming back from it. Yeah, I understand. I know, I know what you're saying. Um, and as you say, against Fulham as well, the goalkeeper makes a big mistake to get them back into the game. And to be fair, I've been very critical of them over the last sort of few years, but oh, Pogba exactly. has really stepped up in the last few games and scores another great goal. Um, and do you know what? There's just something about as you say, I do fancy City, but there's something about United. Everything seems to be going their way. They're getting bits of good fortune that you need to win leagues. Players are getting injured in all our teams. Neither mm-hmm. are, are seem to be getting a lot of things in their favour. Um, so I just just got that. I've got that part of my head that they're going to be there or thereabouts. I think I think they'll definitely they'll hold up a challenge, like I say, but they might fade out maybe by end of March, April. I think I'd say mm-hmm. I'm a they'll just definitely just kick on. You know, everybody I spoke to, like yourself, is saying the same. They, they don't really believe in any of the contenders, and I would say I understand why because you look at them and you haven't been that convincing, but. It's just the way things are going for them. It makes me think it could be their year. I don't know. The way you just sort of think their name's on it. I just sort of uh, get that feeling. Um, and if the Bruyne is missing now and City's results on it, then people will be saying differently in a couple of weeks' time. But hey, just to finish off, the main reason I got you on here, um, and we should have had a, we should have, I was hoping to get you on for the start of the show a bit. There's just so much has happened in the last sort of 24 hours. Um, but your team, Newcastle, going for a really, really bad spell. Um, me and Callum had a quick chat about it the other day. And, the Arsenal game for me was a sort of the first time I looked at it and went, they, they look hopeless. There's just no way they're, they're going to turn us around. And there's a lot of things wrong with the club. Um, you'd obviously know a lot more than me, but 
just before we end it, Steve Bruce, um, what's your opinion on him? Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I think he's completely out of his depth. Like even as soon as he came on, like you could tell, like there was just like no one wanted him on. And the worst part is that we genuinely paid four million pounds to get him on, with Rafa then going out too. And Rafa was the only person I wanted. He wanted just full control transfers and mm. 75 million. And all oh, anyone to them was just an upgrade in the training facility. But my gosh, they just was not having it. Mm, tell me this, right? Tell me this. Why did you not want Bruce for? Why? He, sure. Mm. Even you look at Aston Villa, he couldn't even get them all promoted. Yep. He had Aston Villa in a dodgy spell in the championship. Like Sheffield mm. Wednesday, the exact mm. same. Like I don't think personally he's good enough as a Premier League manager. Right. Exactly. I know he's done well at Sunderland. Um, I don't know if that's sort of come on there, but he is a Newcastle fan, isn't he? Aye, uh, that somehow, uh, um, but like He done all right with Sunderland, uh, but then he still then get, ends up getting sacked or resigns or something like that. Uh, I think Hull as well. Eh? Did he really get Hull? I think he meant to really get Hull. Uh, I know what you mean. I think the big, the big thing for you was he's had such a connection with Benitez. Um, he obviously, he was very loyal to when he went down and he brought his back up. Um, and he is an elite manager. I think there's very few elite managers still about. You look at He's, you look at his CV, what he's done at Liverpool, Chelsea, Valencia, you know, he's an elite manager. And I think the problem is when, when he left, you were never going to get anybody of that of that stature to replace him. So it was always going to be very difficult for the next manager to come in. It was like when Ferguson left United, the next manager was always going to be a downgrade. And he's seen it with Moyes, he wasn't really given a chance. Um, he's doing really well at West Ham. I don't think he's at that level, to be honest, but he was never really given a chance anyway. Um, and it's sort of the same with Bruce. I think the fans were on his back from minute one anyway. And obviously now, if he was sacked, I don't think he could have any complaints. It's a really poor one of form. But the news that we're getting at the moment, Owen, is that he's not going to be sacked. And Mike Ashley's got his full confidence on him. Now, we're going to get to Mike Ashley in a moment. But we obviously seen the news that ended. Bournemouth's first team coaches come in to Newcastle. They obviously support Bruce and maybe give out different ideas and stuff. Um, Graham Jones, I can't say an awful, awful lot about him, but one thing I would say about Bournemouth is their style of play is very different than Newcastle's. Um, a lot of passing, a lot of attack and play. So maybe that's one thing, thing behind it. I'm not sure what you think. Uh, I'm not too sure, like exactly, like because but at the same time too, like we're getting a few players from Bournemouth, like you're looking at Cal Wilson and Ryan Fraser, and then Fraser's been on the team three injuries and then gets sent off then against Sheffield United for two stupid yellow cards. Like, yeah. uh, you're paying twenty million pounds for Cal Wilson. And you're lumping three balls up them like that's what everyone will call Brucey ball like. Yeah, you're, I think, you're I think Wilson, on average below nearly thirty percent of game possession, like even at home, even against teams like like Brighton blew us away, free nil. I, mean, I, I don't think he ever has like a set plan on what to do. Mm, personally, I think, I think, it's, I think it's, with Wilson, he looks like. he looks so unhappy too, doesn't he? Well, he, he looks like he doesn't enjoy playing on the team. And that's a that's a big big issue. And I think Bruce he said after the she had a game against Arsenal. No, the gloves were off and they were going to change it up for the Arsenal game. And to be fair to him, he had three strikers on the pitch. He had Jolington, who's been really, really poor since he came on. I don't know what's... He's, a lot of money spent on him too. Was it 40 million, was it? 40 million, eh? <laughs> That's crazy. And then you've Andy Carroll, who to be fair, he looks absolutely dusted. He looks like he's well past it. And then Wilson, 20 million. So he's 60 million worth of strikers. And then Andy Carroll... Um, and they can't seem to string two passes together or any create any clear cut chances. So he, even playing with the three strikers, it didn't really it didn't really change the style. So I'm not sure whether that style is just ingrained in the players or there's just no confidence to get out and play. No, but like what well, actually Ireland the last couple of years, mm. where under Steve, or under Martin Eden, under um, Mac McCarthy, it was the same. It didn't matter what players played, even when they played in teams with a club who had a possession based side of play. When they came to Ireland, it was different. It was just get on the ball and lump it forward. No confidence to get on the ball and play. So do you think that's a cultural problem at the club where it doesn't really matter who the coach is, where they're going to play a certain way and it's going to be very unattractive and very off the cuff and sort of lump it up and hope something happens? I, I don't think, like it. I think that's more down to management more than anything. Like Because I don't think, like personally, we don't have like two bad players, like especially teams around us. Yeah. I don't think. like I think we would like have a better team. Especially that, I think like, a lot of players would want Callum Wilson. Do you know what I mean? A lot of teams would want Callum Wilson. And he's having like, so. Personally, I don't know why he didn't go to Aston Villa. Like, if you're looking at Oi Watkins, Oi Watkins is getting chance after chance. They're like playing with Greenish, Al Yeah. And all them. Like, and then you're just looking at us, just constantly like four or five to the back, lumping it up to someone who's about five foot nine. 
I, I know. know it's a real struggle. Um, Almiron looks like he's trying, but there's just nothing happening from him. He looks like he's the one player to on the ball and play. He's he's getting played out of position like that. So I like he's signed as a number ten. Nice and right mad, not four four two, more or less covering the right back or the right back isn't good enough. And then Shelby's been really, really poor this he looks like he's not interested. He looks like he's going back to his old ways. Um, I, I don't know where he's are going at the moment. Um, I, I think one thing I would I would say about it is you look at Newcastle over the last ten years, I think Gary Neville made a great point. It's been the same sort of thing. Mm. Under Benitez, the football was not great either. But as you say, there was a lot of connection with Benitez, and I think because he was an elite manager, the, the, the fans just loved having him there. The um, players got out of there too, though, like the way like he played. But like we've even beat Spurs 5 1, beat United, beat Arsenal, beat Chelsea 3 yeah. 0. Like the results were all there. Like, yeah, and then no, you're I, looking at giving Steve Bruce over 100 million pounds when Rafa only wanted 75. No, I agree. Yeah. I think Bruce has a better yeah. team than Rafa did. I agree. I think Bruce has a, has a more has more at his disposal than Benitez did. But I think if you, if, you, if you look at it now, there's a sort of I think you never said there's an association with Newcastle. The football's crap, and you're, you know, you're going to be in a relegation fight, and it's just about trying to stay up. Um, and that's something that Newcastle fans are obviously unhappy with because they are a big club. Um, you look at them in the nineties; they were brilliant. They were one of the best teams to watch, even in the early two thousands. Um, with Bobby Robson, and and it all sort of changed when that sort of Graham Sinus and um Sam Allardyce come on, but it all sort of plummeted. Um. And then eventually, yeah, I mean, Alan Shearer, he's got relegated that first shot. And it's not really changed since. I think Alan Pardew came on and done, there was one season where he's really, really good. I uh, came really in nice one season. Um, and you have players like Kabai and stuff, and CC and Dan Baba, and it was a bit better, but obviously it ended then. And then since then, it's been very similar since. So do you think a lot of the responsibility has to, has to lie with Mike Ashley? Oh, it's between the staff I up with Mike Ashley. Like, like, we're relegated twice now under him. I think this season reminds me too much of like 15 16 when Leicester won the league because we had Steve McLaren, remember, like at the time, yeah. And you could just see everything was shocking, like, and we couldn't even get out of the bottom three, like, under home. But I think like everything is just so similar, just reminds me, especially on like, the ability to the league. Mm. Like, you're looking at Burnley beating Liverpool, like, West Brom getting results against Liverpool, and then fair enough, like, we drew with them too. But like, Fulham are, are, look far better than us, like, of a championship squad. If you look at teams that are below you, like Brighton um, and Fulham, they've got an identity about them. They look like there's a bit of confidence about them. Even when they lose, they sort of know what they're doing. Um, and that's why you sort of think on our couple of results, the men teams need to be in real trouble. But um, I think Sheffield Janitor are certainly going to I think they're gone. I think West Brom's going to struggle. I know they've got a good result against the Wolves, but I think I, th- I don't think they've got the quality to stay in the league. I think they're going to really struggle. I think Fulham, a lot of, there's a lot of love about Fulham because he Parker's done really he's got very limited tools but he's got a state of the play they're attacking they're good to watch I think their problem as well is a lack of quality in the final third if Lukman doesn't score I don't know what's happening with Mijovic he's completely fell out of favour but if, if he doesn't do it Lukman you sort of think he will so if they keep him fit I think he's going to he's going to be key I think if he get injured they'd be in trouble but you guess all the other team I would look at and think they're seriously in danger of going down if we uh, keep going I think we're down like Personally, I think we're yeah. going on, like, if we keep him. Our, his whole mindset, too, is just, like, give the body on to maximum and hope he does something. He's been injured, too. He's right with COVID and stuff. He's had a really bad... Uh, he's, he's, he's back now, so he is now, um, Saturday. To be fair, I think we have him coming back. He does a create a bit of fear and an and opposition player. Now, that's the one player, I think, when you play Newcastle, geez, you need to try and keep him quiet. A bit like with Zaha, with Palace, he's the one player you pinpoint and you think, right, if he's at it, It'll be a difficult like after, and he's missed them over the last few weeks because he's quite direct. But uh, the issue, the issue is, is they're not scoring goals. They've all these strikers, and they've got one goal in the last eight games or something like that. So if you're not scoring goals, it's going to be very difficult to stay in the league. Um, you look at Fulham and Brighton; they're scoring. They've got players that are sco- have up, found a bit of form. Um, I looked at your upcoming fixtures. Villa away on Saturday is going to be very difficult, isn't it? Oh, I think we're getting stumped, like. I, I thought Man City probably could have done good against Volvo because it's been like, what, maybe about three weeks since Volvo played. Uh, 19 days. Where Volvo, you swear Volvo wasn't even, uh, like, like, I think. I think Volvo look at that game and think it's a great chance to get three points. Um, But Newcastle will make it difficult for them. That's the thing. Volvo, I think, have struggled against teams that sit really, really deep against them and almost treat them like a top team. Um, And I think that'll be the way Newcastle approach it. They'll be very cautious and, and defend deep. Um, But the problem is the draw... 
probably not going to do much for you. So if he's need a one, he's the man to try and get out of this run. Oh, you would, you would need a one like big time, like. But then even like look at Aston Villa too. Like Aston Villa last season, they should have been relegated. It was just down to going technology kept them up, okay. and then like the investment then that they got through, yeah, I just took them one step up, like. But again, it's a state of play, and the fans are loving it, and they're getting attacking football. And then the other team, these are playing after Villa. Again, there's been a lot of talk about them. We attack on football's leads. You look at Leeds' squad, you look at Newcastle's squad. You no, know, why can Newcastle not play that way? But but you look at it and you think Leeds have had a bit of a slump. That'll be your best chance to get three points coming up, I think. I think Leeds are hitting that stage of the season where they do tend to they get tired. Mm. Um they probably would benefit from a break. But this season there's not going to be any break. So I think this is this will be the most vulnerable. The best thing to get Leeds on the being their most vulnerable. So that'll be your best chance to get the three points to come up. I uh, see. I think it might be, but at the same time, like like Leeds against, but we played Leeds just like last month. It was them. just ran, just ran us to the ground, like uh, three goals from like from our corner, uh, two goal, two goals from the corner, like we had, and then they just I ran us all to show like against Arsenal too. The first goal uh, in the corner, uh. and then like, but then Steve Bruce angle, but like I said, just going to the same style that they did against Arsenal, mm-hmm. against Ball of the Mall, like, and I just. Don't see like how you can understand it. Something's not working. Mm, I agree. I agree. And, and I think as well, the club need to act as well if it doesn't change because you can't just let this slide on because it makes it very difficult for the next manager to come on. Um, I think the next few games are crucial. I looked at the fixtures. Villa on Saturday away from home is going to be difficult. He leads at home, and I think he's had Palace at home as well. So then two home games against Leeds and Palace mm. are crucial. He needs to get points. I think if if he loses the next few games, I don't see any way he can stay in his job because he could be. If any of the end teams pick up any results, he's going to be in really, really trouble. Um, and, and just on just on, on it, right, I think this is the most concerning time for you because I think if he's good out in this time, it's going to be very difficult to come back up. What do you think? Uh, the, the reason why we got back up was to the Rafa Benitez like last, last time. Like, we didn't even get like one like in our first couple of games of the championship, then but one not like. But that was just done the Brighton ball on it, like, like not one the last three games. You know more than me as well. As the t- I heard the takeover is. I know there's been a lot of talk about it, but the tackleover is based on you staying in the league. I think the tackleover is off if you are elegant. Oh, if we, like, like, I see, like, it's a seven fighter song, this sacks deep Bruce. But then you're looking at the implications of my guys to lose money with £350 million, mm. plus then the money for staying in the league, too, that he'll pocket. He'll want to try and stay in the league, there's no doubt about it, for his own personal interest. Um, what is the story? Where are we at on the takeover? Because there's been so much talk about it over the last sort of year. Where are they at? Uh, like, well, it was like around the summer. It was all like starting. And then... We're going to get to and all these players are coming on. <laughs> Argentino, Allegri, and Mobley coming on now. The whole lot. <laughs> but that whole end went from BN Sports, a party right in the Spurs and Liverpool. Those are trying to get the bike clubs. They like knock it off because a part of the piracy planes in Saudi Arabia. Nah, um, so, so, so see on that now, where are we at? Are we any further forward on or it's all it's all taken a court now. They got your boy Nick the Mark one. Yeah. The sports lawyer. Apparently he got Man City out of the AFA van and even financial fair play. Like so he's like got Darby out of like uh I think it was points deduction, reduced Jeffrey Wednesdays, like so he knows what he's doing. Yeah. But it all then came down to like mainly just conflict between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. But mm-hmm. then, like, I've seen them that, like, they've, like, made up and, like, the piracy thing's all scrapped and stuff like that. But then I think the, the owners and directors test, there's something dodgy going on with this. Because mm-hmm. I don't, like, I don't understand how Burnley can get taken over in the space of four weeks. Do you think that the, ours was even announced for the 13. Do you think that the, the, owner, the, the people in the buy the club are with the series finish in the league? Uh, like, de- definitely. Like, I think they must have a plan in some way, like, of... If this championship, <laughs> uh, like exactly, like like they will have to make sure that this year goes ahead. Like, well, then they could end up giving like money some way just to like sack them. But mm-hmm. like, it's all going to come down. I reckon March time, like you'll know what way it'll stand. I think the next few games is going to be crucial for Newcastle's um, chances to stay in the league. I think they need to find some points. They just get out of this this out of the slump. I mean, these are sitting on 19 points. These are very, very vulnerable. Um, a, a couple of teams get results. Now, these are going to be dragged further down. So, big, big few games come up. Um, just before we go, big, uh, quick score prediction for the game on Saturday with Evola. I say about 3 0 Evola, like. Evola. And that there sums <laughs> up where any key are. But, oh, hey, thanks for coming on. You've been a great guest. Um, you, have you enjoyed the show? 
I enjoyed it, Dave. Happy days, happy days. I'll get you on again. Uh, hopefully, you're a happy, uh, lot more positive company around you, Kev. <laughs> same you're on. But hey, thanks very much. I'll see you again. Top man. All right, that all. All right, cheers.